you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Out of all the commandments, there is none that is more important than these two. And then that person said, Wow, truly, loving God with all our heart, all our mind, and all our strength, and loving our neighbors as ourselves, those two are truly any better or more precious than any offering that we can give. And Jesus said, and by that, you have received wisdom, and God's kingdom is not far. So, dear brothers and sisters, in here we can see and we should meditate on why. Why does Jesus keep wanting us to love him? Why does Jesus keep asking people to love him with all our heart, all our mind, and all our strength? In the past, I've asked this question a lot. Well, God loves me. Well, is, is it just a one sided love God has for me? If He loves me, why does He want me to love Him? Then, if He loves me, then He loves me. It's just do as He likes. Why does He have to ask me to love Him? And if we're talking about love, isn't love a sacrifice? Isn't love not wanting anything in return? Why did Jesus ask me to love him as something that he gets in return for loving? And maybe I'd say, oh, I don't have such time, I don't have such um, things that I can do to love Jesus. And so, I can't even love people well. How do I love Jesus? Loving Jesus is very hard. And I don't know why do I have to love him. And I don't have any motivation to do so. So I like to tell all of you here, why does Jesus, why does God want us to love him? It is not for his benefit, but it is for Good. Why does God want us to love Him? It is because God wants us to be blessed. In the book of Psalms, chapter 1, it says here that what kind of person is a blessed person? What kind of person can receive blessing? It says the blessed is like a tree planted by streams of waters which yields its fruit in season and its leaf does not wither, and whatever they do prospers, and their path will be looked after by God. So it says here, the, one of the blessings that God gives people give us, so what kind of blessing? It says here, so in the book of Psalms it says here, when we love Him, when we love His laws, when we meditate on His laws day and night, like when we love someone and we keep thinking of them and when we love God in this way love is a type of blessing so when we love God we will receive this blessing we will be blessed so why does God want us to love Him? because God doesn't want us to be sad God wants us to receive joy from loving Him in the book of John chapter 15 verse 10 it says if you keep His commands and if you choose to love Him then the joy will be in us and that joy is not just a small joy that joy will be overflowed so when we choose to love we will receive joy that day, I was um, seen from a screen, so who appeared? Blackpink Black And I saw all of their, all their fans kept chasing after them and shouting. And they, were, they were so happy because they saw, they saw their idol, they saw BTS. They saw um, all these idols and they were kept, kept shouting in excitement and they were jumping of joy. So dear brothers and sisters, when we love, it will bring us joy. 
when we love God, God will let our joy overflow. So why does God want us to love Him? Why do we have to love God? Because loving God is also an honor. When we choose to love God, you receive an honor. In the book of John chapter 1, it says, Yet to all who did receive Him, and those those who love him, those who believe in his name, we will be given the right to become the children of God. When we are born by God, we will receive his abundance, we will receive his grace, we will receive his honor. So, one thing that is very clear is that there is a classical uh, movie it's, 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 classical movie that can withstand time that no matter how many versions that people see it um, about Cinderella from the past to now from when they were young and seeing a lot of versions until now my, my kids are still watching Cinderella and even when I watch it with them I still feel interested even though I've already known the ending I've watched it but why am I still uh, intrigued by this story because when we watch this story we will be uh, we expect and we want we long to be like Cinderella to receive this honor when she falls in love with the prince and the prince falls in love with her and she becomes and she becomes the daughter-in-law of the king so when she loves in this way she receives this honor and all the people who really envy and be jealous of Cinderella for being loved by the prince so the God that we believe in is the King of all kings, is the Lord of all lords. So when we choose to love God, it, is, it also means that we are becoming princes, we are becoming princesses. How much of an honor this is. So that time, there's this time I was watching this movie, and this movie, there was this maid, she was serving this young master, because she was not only very loyal in serving, she was also uh, very serious in helping and aiding the young master. And whenever the young master, he was feeling down, when he, um, he was feeling low, and he needed help, the maid would keep um, helping him, would keep supporting him. And there's one time that the maid even uh, risked her life to save the young master. And after that, you know the ending, you, you know, know the end of the story. So this young master in the end chose to marry this maid to become his wife. So when you love someone, what you get in return is an honor. When we love God, God will let us receive an honor. God will let us receive this honor of being loved. But why do we have to love him? In the book of Psalms, chapter 23, it says how David wrote a poem about his feelings, about his joy, about his blessed feeling of how he feels that having this God, how he described this feeling of having God. He said, God is his shepherd. And by that he likes nothing. And he feels like he's lying down in green pastures. And he sees that next to him, there are quiet waters around him. There's this, there's this stream. And listening to the streams of water, and he lies on the green pastures and looks at the beautiful sky, and a breeze comes by, and he felt that God is his shepherd. He can fall in love with this God. And this falling in love with God is his honor. And in the book of Psalms, it says, it says, when he had this God, God will guide him, will lead him on the right path. Even though he passes through the darkest valley, he will fear no evil because God will protect him. 
whatever he does, God will use his staff and his rod to comfort him, to lead him, to guide him. And it describes here, being able to love God, being able to be in God is his greatest pleasure in life. And God will let him, and God will prepare a table before his enemies. As you receive the greatest blessing in his life through loving God. So why does God want us to love him? Like David, he feel like being able to love God is enjoying. Being able to love God is a joy, is a blessing. So there's this day, I was... Uh, going to a barber shop, and uh, and the barber started to uh, wash my hair. And when he was washing my hair, I felt really enjoying myself. I felt really, uh, I was really enjoying myself. And dear brothers and sisters, when you love God, when you draw close to God, you know what the Bible says is that God will count every strand of your hair, every strand of it. God will count it. So when there is someone that uh, holds you by the hair and caresses your hair, that is really enjoying. So loving God is enjoying. So why does God want us to love Him? There was this um, Italian um, old man who was 93 years old and that from the hospital, and the hospital told him because he used a day of oxygen, he had to uh, pay 5,000 pounds. And when this, and when this old man heard this, he started crying. And the hospital said, uh, and the hospital thought, oh, is it because the old man is crying because he's unable to uh, pay? And then the hospital uh, staff was very curious. But instead, the old man replied, it is not because he couldn't afford the medical fees, but he said, Today, the hospital is only is charging him for 50,000 pounds just for a day of oxygen. But he has been breathing in all the oxygen that God has given him for 93 years, and God has never charged him for any of it. And when he thought back on this, he felt really guilty um, for what he had, what was God. So that day when I was seeing, uh, I saw uh, one of my friend's uh, kid being given birth to. So if a child has um, yellow skin, the hospital will uh, put the baby into uh, this like incubator thing with um, ultraviolet rays so that it can, so that the yellow skin can fade away. And it, and it is charged by hours. So now, no matter how old we are, we are um, enjoying the, sun, the rays of sunlight that God has given us every day, but we have never uh, paid God anything. So dear brothers and sisters, why, do we, why does God want us to love Him? Because when we love God, when we have a loving relationship with God, all the air, all the sunlight, all the food, all the soil, all the land that we step on, we don't have to pay for anything. When we love God, God will pay off all our debts. When we love God, the Bible says, God will let us be wealthy, God will let us receive an abundance. And this abundance, this wealth, is without anxiety. A lot of people, they, can, they are really wealthy, they can earn a lot, they have a lot of inheritance. However, they're worried about it being stolen, they're worried about um, it, they are worried about themselves being um, unhealthy, not healthy enough to enjoy it. So dear brothers and sisters, why, do, why does God want us to love Him? So that we can receive abundance. Why does God want us to love Him? The Bible also says, when we love God, we, we tend to say, uh, why does God want us to love Him? Because we tend to say that 
Lengths do I have to reach in my spiritual life to show that I am growing in maturity in my spiritual life? So, how can we determine if a person's spiritual life is um, very high, is very mature, is very in depth? So, how do we measure if we, as a Christian, is being really strong in our spiritual life? And that measurement is our love for God. So, when we love God, that is um, a sign of spiritual maturity in our lives. So, when, if you say, how can we be mature in our spiritual life? And that is depending on um, how it, how deep is our love for God, how high is um, the height of our love for God. So, why does God want us to love Him? So, because God doesn't want us to perish. In the book of John chapter 3, verse 16, it says, God wants us to receive eternal life. God doesn't want us to perish. So, do you know, why does God want us to love Him? Why does God want us to love Him with all our heart, all our mind, and all our soul, and all our strength? Because... God wants you to receive joy. God wants you to receive blessings because God wants you to receive honor. God wants you to receive this enjoyment. God wants you to receive. God wants you to enjoy all the abundance He has in your life. God wants you to enjoy the salvation. God wants you to enjoy His eternal life He has prepared for you. So, brothers and sisters. So, in the past, we kept asking. Oh, um, loving God, loving God is like such a painful thing. Loving God is such a hard thing. But dear brothers and sisters, today I'm here to tell you, loving God is a really, a, a really joyful, is a really enjoying thing. It's a blessing. It's an abundance. It's a blessing in our lives. So I'm here to tell you, in the whole Bible, actually the whole Bible is only describing one thing. The whole Bible is telling of how God loves us and how we should love God. So you have to know if you don't love God, when, God, when we don't love God, it's a kind of ignorance, it's a kind of foolishness. So when people don't love God, the Bible says, that if we don't love God, we are like a people who are to be cursed. It is a kind, those who don't love God are to be cursed, are to be perished, as described in the Bible. So in our lives, if we miss this opportunity to love God, that is a great regret. The Bible says, those who do not bear fruit will be um, cut off and thrown away by God. Those who don't love God who are neither cold nor hot towards God, God wants to spit you out. But when we love God, it says here, you'll receive joy, you'll receive blessing. You receive honor. You receive grace. You receive His salvation. You receive limitless His limitless love. And in the book of um, James, it says here, because loving God is an honor, it's a joy, it's an enjoyment. Therefore, we have to keep. Of guarding us so that we can be in God's love, so that we will not lose the chance to love God. So, how does God want us to love Him? Firstly, if we love God, when we love someone, the best way is to listen to His words. So, so in the book of John, chapter 15, and in Deuteronomy, it says, 
。神要我们怎么爱他呢？就是听从、遵守他的话。神所吩咐我们的，我们都照着去做。There's one time, um, Sila, she has said, she encouraged me, and she told me, you have to love God earnestly. You have to observe God. You know, today, to this day, how, why, how can I become a pastor? It is because I followed and listened to Sister Priscilla's words. So why did I listen to her words? Because I loved her. Because I love her. So I marry her as my wife. So when I love her and I listen to her, I became the pastor of this church, and I receive this blessing that God has in my life. So dear brothers and sisters, how does God want us to love Him? God also wants us to love one another. So there was this day. When it was dinner, when it was the Last Supper, before Jesus was being crucified, when he was having his Last Supper with the disciples, after that he he washed the disciples' feet, and Peter said, "Oh, Jesus, you are our Lord. Why are you washing our feet?" And Jesus said, "Today I am washing your feet." Because I love you. How the Father loves me, I will love you as well. So I will give you a new command. From now onwards, you will love one another. So, brothers and sisters, how does God want us to love Him? We love God. So we should. When we love God, we have to love who God loves. So that is to love the people around us. We have to love one another. So I like to show you seventeen ways we can love someone. So normally we say, "Oh, I don't know how to love someone. I don't know how to build relationships. I don't know how to follow up my friends. I don't know how to lead them." Um, to join us, to join our connection. So today I'm here to tell you there are 17 ways to love people. First, you have to remember the person's name. You have to know um, their course, their subject, um, their work, their occupation. You have to know where they live, their hometown, where they come from. You have to know their background. You have to know their nationality or where they live, which state they live. You have to remember their birthday. You have to remember their anniversary, their wedding anniversary. You have to remember the important dates in their life. And number five, the fifth way we can love someone is that we have to know what they like, what they like to eat, like. A lot of people. Uh, there was this day I received uh, a lot of um, food that people have sent me, and when I opened, when I opened one of it, and the first one was roja, and I was like, wow! And I opened the second one, wow! And I was more happy. It was asam laksa. So loving people. We have to know that the sixth way to love someone is to know their hobbies, their interests. A lot of times, when we build a relationship with someone, we can start from um, we can start from um, their interests, their hobbies. And what are the other ways we can love someone? Remember, we have to avoid what they don't like. We have to avoid of their bottom lines. Well, besides that, we also have to keep praising, acknowledging, encouraging, um, honoring them. And other than that, if there is an opportunity to rise, we can um, invite them to join our one day camp. We can invite them to join our sky challenge. We can invite them to join、um, these online games, these online activities. We have, if we have the chance to do so, you can invite them to join our connect group activities, our outdoor activities. If there is this chance, we can invite them to have this one day trip with us. So. What other ways can we love someone? A lot of times we can give them surprises. 
not just of gifting them things, you can also uh, give them a pat on the shoulder when they need it, and tell them, oh, it's a good, it was a good thing to know you. Or maybe it doesn't have to be like a special day. You can just like um, give them a small gift or like a small cake just on a random day and hold your hand and say thank you for. And you might say, oh, why thank you? And they, they ask why thank you, and you say, oh, thank you because it is um, an honor to know you, to um, know you in this connection. So this is a way of loving someone. So other than that, you also have to um, from we have to um, go deep into um, their past, into their family backgrounds, into what they've experienced, into knowing them, knowing their needs, knowing um, their difficulties they're facing. And we can love them through the love of God, and we can pray for them, and to go even deeper. You can understand what is going on in your heart. You can have a like a heart-to-heart -heart session with them to know what troubles them, to know the difficulties that they're facing, to know what they're facing, so that you can help them and you can help them to um, get over to overcome all the problems they're facing and to encourage them so that they can um, um, grow further and to overcome more problems. And and you say, how do you love someone? Remember to introduce God into their lives, to encourage them to accept Christ, to encourage them to serve God, to train them to become a great spiritual leader that is used by God, your brothers and sisters. In the Bible, it, says a it talks about a very simple thing. How do we love God? Firstly, we have to listen to his words. What words? And that is to love our neighbors as ourselves. Like the people around us, we love them like how we love each other. And in John 15, it says, How do we love God? It is like, um, the greatest love is like when we give our life for our friends. It says here, God wants us to live this kind of love, to live out this kind of love. Besides, the greatest love is God. It says that when we are willing to give our life for our friends, when we are willing to uh, have this kind of love towards them, there is no greater love than us. So dear brothers and sisters, you know, in the Bible it says, there's this person, he has greatly influenced the society at that time through his um, actions. And he had also influenced all the Christians from, from his time to now, to the future. And who is that person? That person is Paul. So, how can Paul have such an influence? True, how he loves people, just so that people can receive the Jesus, of the salvation of Jesus, the joy, the honor, the blessing of loving God, so that we can, uh, so that we can enjoy the salvation that God has prepared for us. Paul was rejected, was laughed, was misunderstood, was hit, was um, attacked, was was thrown outside of the city and after of getting up after um, he was thrown out the next day he would get up and go on with loving, loving others to introduce God's love to others he has faced many shipwreck incidents before and the sun in the day would um, shine upon him very vigorously and he'd be hungry and cold at night a lot of times like, he'd be facing um, venomous snakes to be bite, to be bitten and he was hit through almost like 40 times and he, he could, could almost die but that didn't affect him from telling all of the world that God loves them. 
而且又告诉所有的人说，你要爱神，因为这是一种幸福，这是一种喜乐，这是一种尊荣，这是一种爱，这是一种享受，这是一种成熟，这一是一种富足。有一天，有一个行淫的妇人被人捉到了。按照当时候的刑法，她要被石头打死。最后呢，这个妇人呢被捉到大街上，当那些人要用石头打死她的时候呢，最后她竟然没有被打。而且，他安全的离开了。为什么？因为当时候，耶稣出现了在现场。耶稣说：“有谁没有犯罪的？有谁不犯罪的呢？如果有人没有犯罪的，才可以用石头打他。结果呢？世界上每个都是罪人，每个人都犯了罪。”没有一个人有资格可以用石头打这个行淫的妇人。这个行淫的妇人最后她安全离开，为什么？因为有神给，因为有耶稣对她的爱，是因为她被爱，她的生命才得以拯救，她才可以免过被石头打死的危险。Her life didn't end with her being stoned to death. And there's another. There's another person in the Bible. When Jesus was stoned to death, 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 when Jesus was And Peter kept saying, "I don't know the man." But Jesus, Jesus, never mentioned the man. Jesus 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 I know that we will face a lot of challenges, a lot of problems. People will reject us. Sometimes people will avoid us because they don't want to face the challenges. Sometimes people will avoid us because they don't want to face the challenges. Sometimes people will avoid us because they don't want to face the challenges. Sometimes people will avoid us because they don't want to face the challenges. Sometimes people will avoid us because they don't want to face the challenges. Sometimes people will avoid us because they don't want to face the challenges. Sometimes people will avoid us because they don't want to face the challenges. Sometimes people will avoid us because they don't want to face the challenges. Sometimes people will avoid us because they don't want to face the challenges. Sometimes people will avoid us because they don't want to face the challenges. Sometimes people will avoid us because they don't want to face the challenges. Sometimes people will avoid us because they don't want to face the challenges. Sometimes people will avoid us because they don't want to face the challenges. Sometimes people will avoid us because they don't want to face the challenges. Sometimes people will avoid us because they don't want to face the challenges. Sometimes people will avoid us because they don't want to face the challenges. Sometimes people will avoid us because they don't want to face the The disappointment that he had given Jesus. So we have to do so as well. So we can see in the end how Peter became the one with the highest authority among the twelve disciples, and how after receiving the anointing of the Holy Spirit, Peter stood up and spoke to up three thousand people, and the Holy Spirit was with him. And a lot of people were touched by what Peter had said and accepted Christ. It is when Peter didn't give up on loving Jesus. So when Jesus kept on loving Peter, Peter's life, his potential, this supernatural potential in him was released. And it was so powerful that he was released. And it was so powerful that he was released. And it was so powerful that he was released. And it was so powerful that he Was um was nineteen years old in Hong Kong, and at the time, a lot of um famous uh singer would uh have this um concert. Would have this concert in this um famous um this famous um stadium. And this um and this singer was really special because at the age of nineteen, she had um five um five. Um, her uh, own individual um, concerts in this uh, special stadium, and she was given the most outstanding, um, this uh, most outstanding singer title in um, 
Globally, she was a name for、um, one of the most、um, influential singers in the、uh, Hong in the whole world, and the singer's name is Jem. So Jem has been a Christian since she was very young. So like a lot of us, we,、uh, so like a lot of us, we've been、um, growing up since we were young in church. But you know. Growing up in church, being a Christian for many years doesn't mean that we truly know God. We truly love God. It doesn't mean that we truly know how to love others. It doesn't mean that we truly know how to love others. It doesn't mean that we truly know how to love others. It doesn't mean that we truly know how to love others. It doesn't mean that we truly know how to In his in her career, when she wanted to give up, when she was sad, when she was depressed, when she was in huge stress, and a lot of the rehearsals came in, and before all those rehearsals, there were a lot of times she wanted she cried and she couldn't bear all the stress. But Jem had once、uh, testified and said how she could overcome all these problems, all these obstacles. Why can she become? Um, why can she become、um, uh, so loved、uh, by so many now? And is and she testifies to it because she loves God. She loves God. She loves God. And it's because she loves God that when she overcame all the problems in her life, there was a time in her life. She loves God. She loves God. His、uh, her thoughts were in were in negativity. She felt like she was about to be depressed. She was、um, she was unable. She felt like she was unable to bear all this. But in the end, how was she healed? How was she? she、uh, how did she succeed in the end? And it is because she had this God in her life. And she said, "Thank God that in her life." There was this God in her life to help her throughout all the challenges in her life. Thank God that in her career, that she that she had God in it, so she could become one of the most、uh, blissful teenagers in、uh, in her youth. And that is because she loved God. So she was a sister. So like what I shared. Um, in the past, about、um, J J Cho's、um, success, like how he succeeds, how did he succeed because of love? Because he could succeed because there was a there, because he had a mom that loved him. So today, at that、um, that day, I was thinking of a friend. When he was a student, he was thinking of a friend. When he was a student. Uh, when she was a student,、uh, she was、um, sexually harassed by her teacher, and she didn't、uh, dare tell anyone. She had this great sorrow. She had this great shame in her. And this shame had caught hold of her whole life. She was unable to um to um communicate or、um, hang out with、um, guys. She felt that. She was really filthy. She felt that she wasn't worthy of being with other people, and she was thinking, "Why was she alive in this world?" And there was this point where she wanted to commit suicide. She wanted to end her life. She felt like she didn't want to live in this world anymore. But today, she is not only just living. 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 The wife of a pastor. So why? How was she able to live to today? And through her testimony, I heard and I know that because she loves God, because she knows that God loves her, and because she loves God, and because she followed the ways of God, and because there was this one. Because there was this one person who followed God's words and chose to love her, to support her, to help her, and because of that, the Holy Spirit healed her life. And now she is now someone who has a really great serving, great ministry in God. 
So I still remember. Why she the past? What 以前 I was a terrible person. 是个非常糟糕、非常坏蛋的人 Actually, I was thinking. 其实当时候呢 ，My destiny. 我在想着。我的命运， I don't think I live a long life 我不会觉得我自己人生会太会太长。I've done a lot of bad things， 因为我做的坏事。And I was thinking if I weren't careful enough， 我一不小心的话 ，It's either I end up in jail， 不是进监狱度过我的一生，而可能就是很快就是在黑社会里面，很快就被就断送了自己的生命 ，Giving my life and I end up in a coffin。睡在棺材。But, 但是呢，我 How am I able to stand here and share with you guys? Because there was one person. 是因为当时候有一个人 ，She followed the words of God. 遵循了神的吩咐。She followed the commandments of God. 命令。She kept helping me. 他继续帮助我。She kept introducing God's love to me. 继续的。She led me to accept Christ. 把神的爱介绍给我。She encouraged me to pursue God. 他带领我信主。She helped me. 他鼓励我追求神。In a lot of problems, a lot of challenges that I had, she answered a lot of doubts I had. 对福音、对信仰、对基督教的很多的这种的疑难、这种问题。当我软弱的时候，当我想后退的时候，我冷淡的时候，我不想爱神的时候，他鼓励我，他激励了我，他继续的推动我。She loved God. 是因为。Because the love, the love she had for God, had made me into the pastor I am today. And this person that helped me is my wife. And this sister Priscilla, because she loved God, is my wife. And because of that love, she used all in her, all in her strength to love me. Why did she love me? And because of the love she had for me, I felt God's love. I felt God's love. And I gave my life and I gave my all. I offered myself to God. I gave my life and I gave my all. I gave my life and I gave my all. There's FGACYC. FGACYC. So, dear brothers and sisters, there's this statistic, and it says that three hundred thousand people in this country have died because of the gospel. Three hundred thousand people have died because of the gospel. Three hundred thousand people have died because of the gospel. Three hundred thousand people have died because of the gospel. Three hundred thousand people have died because of the gospel. Three hundred thousand people have died because of the gospel. Three hundred thousand people have died because of the gospel. Three hundred thousand people have died because of the gospel. Three hundred thousand people have died because of the gospel. Three hundred thousand people have died because of the gospel. Three hundred thousand people have died because of the gospel. Three hundred thousand people have died because of the gospel. Three hundred thousand people have died because of the gospel. Three hundred thousand people have died because of the gospel. Three hundred thousand people have died because of the gospel. Three hundred thousand people have died because of the gospel. Three hundred thousand people have died because of the gospel. So that whenever these people, when they face obstacles, challenges, or hurt in their lives, because there is this person who loves God, and they are loved by that person, in the end, they accept Christ and they love God. And in the end, they do not only love God, but they also want to live. They not only survive, they have success and they have success. God gave them a better life. 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 A peace that was beyond their imagination, a blessing that was beyond their imagination. So, dear brothers and sisters, you know, when we love God, you will see many doors open for you. You will receive the strength to overcome problems. 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 You will receive the strength to overcome problems
要爱慕你，我要爱慕你，倾倒我的生命，你是我唯一所求。让我心淡淡渴慕你，耶稣，我要爱慕你，我要爱慕你，倾倒我的生命。我唯一所求，让我心淡淡渴慕你，我心满意，我心满意，对你的爱和思念无止境，让我走向。身旁贴近你，主啊，我渴慕寻求你。耶稣，我爱慕你。I love you。我爱你。I love you。耶稣说，如果你爱他。如果你爱神， God, 那就是一种牧养， kind of 那就是一种门训。约翰福音第二十一章，耶稣问你的，耶稣在问你， And Jesus is asking you as well， 你爱我吗 ？Do you love God？ Do you love him？ 彼得回答说， Peter、我爱你。Said, yes, I love you。耶稣就跟。彼得说：“你就牧养我的羊。”耶稣又第二次的问彼得：“你爱我吗？”彼得回答说：“耶稣，我真的爱你。但你去牧养我的羊，你去用我的爱，去爱我所爱的，看顾他们。”爱他们，有时候甚至为他们牺牲，牺牲你的睡眠，摆上你的时间，牺牲你的一些喜好。耶稣第三次问彼得说：“你爱我吗？”彼得说：“耶稣。”你知道一切的，你知道我爱你。You know that I love you, 耶稣，今天跟你说， well, 就好像当时跟彼得说， like、what Peter at the time, 爱 ，love， 就是爱人如己。你爱神就是爱人如己，爱就是一种牧养。Love is discipleship. Love is leading. Love is a relationship. 爱就是一种门训。求神帮助我。我求神帮助你。现在，你可以更爱我。You can love God even more. 维姐常常跟我讲一句话。Priscilla often tells me. If we don't love God even more. 我们就会退步。如果我们没有爱神，撒旦仇敌，很多时候会透过整个环境，要来吞噬我们对神的爱，吞噬我们对神的信。圣经刚才也告诉我们说什么？我们要常常保守我们对神的爱，要常常保守我们的心的爱神。不管你在哪里，今天神跟你说：“来爱我吧，来爱我吧。”
很快 Sky Challenge 开始。So Sky Challenge will start. 我看见神把很多的人带到我们的身边， people, 带到我们的团队里面。Into our midst. We need to respond to this love that God has given us. We need to respond to this love that God has given us. We need to respond to this love that God has given us. We need to respond to this love that God has given us. We need to respond to this love that God has given us. We need to respond to this love that God has given us. We need to respond to this love that God has given us. We need to respond to this love that God has given us. We need to respond to this love that God has given us. We need to respond to this love that God has given us. We need to respond to this love that God has given us. About the the ways that we can love just now, a lot of times we think that we don't know what is love. We don't know how to love. We don't know how. But there's no such thing as not knowing. There's not such thing as not having an idea. It is only when we don't take action because the Holy Spirit is our help. A lot of times when we say we have used all our ways to do that. The Holy Spirit is your way. The Holy Spirit is your path. The Holy Spirit is your creativity. The Holy Spirit is a new beginning. The Holy Spirit is a strategy. God is your path. There is no such thing as no no other path to walk on. There is only when we don't take action that we will run out of ideas. So may God help us, so that all love towards Him to be higher, to be deeper, to be stronger. Let us pray. I pray that in Jesus' name, that you will be blessed. From now onwards, in this in this message, in this sermon, you have received these blessings that God will give us. That when we love God, when we choose to love God, that is a blessing. When you love God, joy will overflow in your heart. When you choose to love God, that is an honor. That is an acknowledgement that God gives you. That is an honor. That is a privilege that God gives you. That when you love God, you will receive an abundance of love that God has given you. An abundance without anxiety. You will receive help. You will receive salvation from God. So that you will not perish. But when you love God, you will receive an abundance of love that God has given you. An abundance without anxiety. You will receive help. You will receive salvation from God. So that you will not perish. But when you choose to love God, you will receive an abundance of love that God has given you. An abundance without anxiety. You will receive help. You will receive salvation from God. So that you will not perish. But when you choose to love God, you will receive an When you love God, you will see that your leadership will grow. When you love God, your influence will increase. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. When you love God, your doors will open to you. Listen to me. Listen to my and your prayer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Dear brothers and sisters, go with God's love. You will see people loving God. You will see people loving God.